Personality is a useful tool, but it cannot define who you are. Who you are lies far beyond who you think you are. That's a quote by Jack O'Keefe in Rhonda Byrne's book, The Greatest Secret. And today we talk with Jack in this episode of Letting Go and the Greatest Secret. I'm Hale Dwoskin. Jack O'Keefe is known for her clarity and direct manner. She is a spiritual teacher, author, and trailblazer in the exploration of consciousness. She has been teaching and holding workshops around the world, guiding people in the unfoldment of their own spiritual journey for more than 10 years. Like every teacher in The Greatest Secret, she is dedicated to freeing humanity from the unnecessary suffering caused by the mind so we can live in the joyful happiness and bliss of our true self. One of the things that Rhonda uh, emphasizes is in the whole book is awareness. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to hear your definition of what that is and how to discover it directly. Mm. We're starting with the easy questions, Hale, aren't we? Oh, of mm. course. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, language can be cumbersome. And when yes. we're speaking about something so intimate and so deep within our own beingness, I'd like to give people more opportunities to be fluid with the language because it's a felt sense is what we're pointing towards. Absolutely. And the felt sense, most of us remember having it as a small child. Definitely. You know you know that adults are a little bit bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you know the world can be a lot more simple than, than what people are making it be. Yes, definitely. That type of insight, wisdom with innocence, in a way, it's a return to that zone. However, we've got to bring with it the, the wisdom of having lived a life, of, mm -hmm. what, of what suffering has taught us, of what being in the world has, um, how it has molded us into be personalities. Mm -hmm. and, and allowing our personality, our character to be there just as it is, yet, knowing that, hey, that's how I show up. That's the outpost of what I really am. And the what I really am is awareness, is that felt sense of innocence, is that sense of being a human being rather than a human doing. It's that quietude within. Sometimes when people drop in there, their mind comes with them. And when your mind comes with you, you'll find it's boring. I don't like it in there. There's nothing happening. I'm afraid. It feels like I'm half dead. So these kind of mm, resistances to resting in pure awareness come up when people are bringing their mind with them and they're mm -hmm. expecting something. Sure. So the main way I think for all of us to find it is to know the difference between the felt sense of that inner calmness where everything's okay and really nothing is happening and knowing, okay, my mind is going to pretend that it can go in there. My mind is going to try and jump in and say, you don't really want this because this isn't exciting. There's no distraction here. So that's what our mind will do. And it's to recognize I see you, mind, I see you, but I'm going back into that which I arose from, that which my personality, my character, my body arose from. I'm going back to that quietness before all of it. Hmm. So, so I hope that kind of explains that it's a felt sense. Yes. And, and, and the greatest obstacle is our mind, because that's the reason that we left it in the first place. Right. So... Before we get into discussing the obstacle, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to ask you one other question about what you said. 
is, is it actually we go anywhere or is it just the mind that comes and goes? Mm, that's exactly it. You nailed it, Hale. The, the mind creates the movie, the movie being, I suppose, what's depicted in the movie, The Matrix, mm -hmm. that, that really this 3D world in front of us and that we participate in, it's very much a product of our thinking mind. And in Rhonda's earlier book, she, she teaches us how to, how to use the mind in order to change your experience of the movie. Right. But that's still just the movie. Yes. And when it. the, when, yeah. And when the movie is not good enough and when you've seen through actually, like I can have, you know, fame, money, love affairs and the absence of all three. And there's still a yearning. There's still a longing that's when we're more available to disconnect from the mind and find out, well, what is it that never left home at all? What is it that's in ho at home all the time? Because the mind at that point has a longing, wants to go home, wants a bit of peace, wants something more permanent. But the mind can never create that. So it's about getting distance from the mind and recognizing it for the beautiful machine, creative mechanism that it is. But should, we're not our mind at all, nor are we a product of our mind. You know what we are is prior to the mind. So it's really about, I suppose, putting the mind into its proper place, yes. putting mind into, hey, this is better use of you. You're a tool that my beingness, my divine essence can pick up, use and set down to function in the world. Then some lightness comes in, then it's a play. It's a play. Even when crappy things happen, it's still, there's a joy in it because there's something that remains untouched. It's not an escapism. It's a discovery. It's a realization, a recognition of, oh my God, when I believe my mind, I'm viewing the world through a very narrow lens. I'm believing I am my personality. I'm believing my thoughts and that's hell. That becomes a hell. Yes. And so dropping into that which isn't moving at all, we call that awareness. Yes, yes. That, that helped really flesh it out. Thank you. Yeah. So what do you believe uh, is the biggest, how do you address that, the obstacles that the mind throws up? Because mm. I know that that's part of what you specialize in. And I want you to share whatever you think uh, and we'll keep going back and forth on this until we get things that you feel are helpful to, to the people listening. But if you were going to start explaining this to someone, how would you explain going about disidentifying with the mind or seeing through, again, when we're focusing on the mind, we're seeing everything through filter after filter after filter and belief yes. after belief after belief. So how do you recommend we start addressing that? Yes. My own approach has two parts to it. There's two facets. And I think where uh, spirituality is going now in these times, we're moving away from monastic patriarchal ashram, seclusion, hermit life of spirituality to a one that's integrated, where abiding in awareness happens while you parent, school your kids at home, while you do grocery shopping, and while you're in bed with a lover, and while you're lamenting the loss of a pet or a parent or a sibling. No matter the experience of life, that which doesn't move is there all the time. So very difficult to even find that inner felt sense when life is in your face with a big traumatic experience. So I found in order to live a meaningful life in an honest way, whereby, whereby we are not kidding ourselves about our spiritual attainment, we've got to keep two tools to the ready. One is how proficient am I? How frequent and how long can I stay there when I drop in? to that felt sense of beingness, mm -hmm. that sense of awareness. Can I stay there? 
Is it like 30 seconds? Can I go there at will? Because at the start, we can't go there at will. We might have to use the memory of what it was like as a child or the memory of a spiritual awakening or the memory of some awe or sacredness that we felt in an experience in our life. Sometimes we have to go to memory. The more we can make it real and drop in through practices of meditation or running a mantra, repeated phrase, the more we can go into that place and stay there for longer periods. We're training our brain to rest there. We're training our mind, hey, you're not the only creator of experience here. This is a direct experience where I'm not going through the mind and where there is rest within and I'm aware of it. The other part of it is, well, what's so darn interesting that you left that exquisite perfection and stillness within? Ah, no. This story in the world is better. Ah, this experience is pulling me out more. This distraction is nicer. Or this pain is so bad that I have lost access to my beingness because suffering is taking all of me. So this is why I use a two-pronged approach. How deep in can you go and can you stay there? Can you rest there? And what is it in the world that your mind is saying deserves more attention than your true nature? Hmm. So it's about addressing both. So mm -hmm. then all the obstacles that can possibly be are a product of where our attention has gone. And it's different for everybody. It's different for everybody. What takes you out might be addiction. What takes you out might be loneliness, might be grief, might be guilt, shame. What takes you out will usually be something painful because yeah. painful experiences are more potent for our mind than beautiful ones. They are etched deeper into our memory bank. They leave trauma in the cells of our body. And sometimes we have to go into those modalities to loosen up the pattern of needing to grasp onto something of the world and leaving our no attention left and the awareness inside. Yes. So yes. there's a plethora of obstacles that the mind can pull up. I mean, life is unlimited in terms of its experiences and our mind is unlimited in terms of where it goes, but it really likes repetition, really likes repetition. It, it will do 60,000 thoughts you had yesterday. You're going to have 60,000 of them again today. We know that. So like, where's living in the present moment? If our mind has a propensity to be that repeti repetitive. And so we've got to unhook the compulsion for our mind to go into story. Story is all right, but are we leaving the pure awareness? Because like I'm using words now, so I can talk about what goes on in my teachings, but something in me, like more than 50%, and it's always more than 50%, is abiding in the stillness with a knowing that what we're talking about is happening in movie land. Hmm. And there's freedom in that there's joy in that there ha there's happiness in that and that's what Rhonda's pointing to is yes, like definitely. hey you know hey like remember who you are you know remember connect yourself up again you know hmm. wonderful so let's explore that further mm -hmm. uh so the, there were two questions that occurred to me that someone listening to this would be interested in and one is what specifically do you recommend for, for people drop, what is the most effective ways you found as you've worked with people to help people drop in, as you call it, uh, or remember? Uh, and then, and then uh, actually let's start there. And the other one, I, just to make sure so we come back to it, is how do you address these addictions, these mm -hmm. beliefs? in a way that uh, that supports the mind in letting them go so that it can be more cooperative mm. with with this uh, with this endeavor to just be what you are. Mm. So, yeah. So you can start with either one since I've sure. outlined both questions. Sure, Let, let's beautiful. Just make sure they cover both. Yeah, and, and I love that you're presenting both together, Hale, because it really is a double pronged approach if we're going to live in the world. We've got to be um, prepared to, to, to go within as often as we can and realize what takes us out and have, have a capacity to manage both 
you know, in every day. Yes, yes. So, so for me, what I have found now is most useful for people is to dial down our nervous system. And there is a beautiful breathing technique that makes us switch out of flight, fright, freeze part of our nervous system and go into operating with rest and digest. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems. If we're in tension, bit of anxiety going on, bit of stress going on, we've cranked up the part of our nervous system that, that is ready to help us to survive. Right. All right, let's switch it off. Because really, are you unsafe? Are you really unsafe? Because your nervous system is reading, I'm unsafe, I'm unsafe, I've got to crank up adrenaline, I've got to crank up. And with that will come identification. With that yes. will come a contraction and a narrowing in. So that the abiding, of course, that needs us to be relaxed and open. Mm -hmm. And so when we use a breathing technique to shift from the anxiety, the fight, flight, fright, or freeze into rest and digest. We're lining up the body to let go. We're going through a chemical trick to relax our system. And then we're able to let go. Then we're able to drop in. We've gotten rid of a huge obstacle. So um, can uh, there are many breathing techniques. Mm. So can you share, yes. get more yes. specific? The more specific, again, yeah. We want to make this as practical for everyone listening yeah. as possible. So I only know one technique that is always effective for shifting out of flight, fright, freeze and into rest and digest. And that is making our out breath longer than our in breath. So when we, when we breathe in, Purse your lips as you breathe out, and it will slow down your out breath. Can you demonstrate? So, yeah, as if you were, as if you were, you know, I don't know, whistling maybe, okay. but not, not doing a whistle with, with your tongue participating in it. So if we breathe in normally through your mouth, through your nose, it doesn't matter. Maybe it would be in on a one, two, three. And now as if you were going to kiss a child, you know, just pursing your lips for a one, two, three, four, five. And okay. in one, two, three, purse your lips, out, two, three, four, five. If we do that nine or 10 times, our body will be relaxed and we'll be in rest and digest. Anxiety goes. So what we're doing is we're, we're playing with, with a polyvagal theory. It's we're playing with, with the nervous system to move it away from its response to danger to trusting our environment. Um, I like this one because the mind will use the body to support its stories, to support the obstacles that it believes to be true. And if we take away the supporting body, the supporting conglomerate of chemicals and form away from the mind, then the mind can't reinforce its movie. We've taken away the body. The body isn't co-opted by our thinking anymore. So if we free up the body and the body is in a state of rest and digest, our thoughts are much less potent, much less potent. And there is access to that which is still and knows it's always safe. And that a really little bit deeper, it's not even a question of whether it's safe or not, it's what is. So, so that breathing technique I found to be hugely, hugely beneficial. And I've spoken with a lot of people who actually, I can't make my outbreath slow down, I can't make it slow down. <gasps> and this in breath is sudden, it's like, yeah, that's what your body is doing because of your thoughts. Let's go through the body because the thoughts will pull up another idea and another idea and another idea. So I found that if we go through the body, these times, and my teachings always change, but these times we're in, something that is a more organic, natural rhythm will respond we will find a rhythm that is 
the, the, the pace of awareness itself when we dial down our nervous system and our body gets relaxed. That's the first part. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, and does that is does it have any particular origin, or is that something you made up? Oh. Um, yes, it came from that scientist who discovered the polyvagal theory, um, Purgis. Stephen Purgis is Stephen his name. Purgis. Okay. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. It came from him, and I've modified it into. Oh gosh, this this is really effective because so many, so many are stressed in our in our life styles that we have nowadays I was like we gotta we gotta separate the body from the mind and here we go we've got a way to calm down the body okay okay now now we've got some capacity to see our thoughts yes you know that's a great first step that's yeah it's a good it's a good first step yeah it's a good first step yeah yeah good you had a second question sorry no please go ahead yeah, you had a second question here. Oh, so the second question is, so you said there's a two prong. One mm. prong is to is to drop in or rest mm. as mm. or that which you truly are. Yeah. Uh, and you gave us a wonderful technique for uh, slowing the breath down, basically, mm. and being more conscious of the breath, because it's also focusing on the breath there's a physiological thing that happens, but I believe there's also just a focus thing. When you focus on breath, that also tends to calm the mind down. And you gave yes. us a wonderful breath to use for that. And you gave yes. us the, the where that came from. So all that's very helpful. Yeah, so good. the other piece is, you said there are two things we need to do. One is to drop in or mm. to rest. And the mm. other is to, to effectively deal with that which we get obsessed with or Mm. that pulls us out or that distracts us or that Mm. enthralls us Mm. that causes us to forget Mm -hmm. that which we truly are yes so let's talk about that yeah in order to 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 get the awareness piece that this book points to in order to Oh, that's what Rhonda's talking about. In order to get that, you've got to see that you're not your personality. Yes. You're not your thoughts. That, that's not who you are. You're, you're not your character. That doesn't mean dismissing it or denying it. It means you play as that, you show up as that, but it's actually not your identity. So how do we move to that recognition? The more distance we get from our thoughts, the more that we're able to see Oh, I'm thinking this. Oh, look, I'm aware that I'm judging myself here. I'm aware that I'm going to the refrigerator for yet another piece of chocolate and and some part of me doesn't want it at all. I'm aware that I'm doing it. That level of objectivity of being able to see our thoughts is really important. That needs to be there all of the time. Now, the source of these thoughts when, when we've got sticky ones that keep repeating and it's showing up like addiction or showing up as Actually, self-sabotage. Let me just inter- interrupt yes. you for just one second. Yes. Is it that we need the, to be, I, I know uh, from my work, if, if I tell people they should do something all the time, they sometimes resist it. It's sure. not that we need to be, isn't, isn't it that it's just a really good intention to have, to be as aware of thoughts as possible as opposed to lost in them. Isn't that what you meant? Sure, that's that's the in-between place. Yes. The, the consequence of, of waking up and and ha- waking up to awareness and having that the hum of, of pure awareness mm. present in your attention all the time. The consequence of that is that there is a knowing that everything your mind does is done by your mind, that it's always a thought. It's, it's never, it never comes up for me before the recognition that it's a thought. There's a seeing of, of every experience as it arises. If it's here and I don't see it arising, then I've got work to do. Got it. Yeah, so, I like that. Yes, that's, that you makes know, it clearer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you for the clarification. Yeah. So it, sure, it's a very high jump, but but 
but I'd like to tell people, hey, this is this happens that you will end up seeing your mind in action because you're not glued up against it. You're abiding and you can see your body, you can see your mind, you can see the story making mechanism and you're not caught up in it. That's a play. That's freedom. Yes. That's and freedom. that's attainable by everyone listening to this. It so, is. Yes, it's absolutely. attainable. And that's the journey, you know, and it's not, I want it right now. And it's like, hey, life is the journey towards it. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the learning. It's a beautiful exploration full of, full of you know, mysteries that get clarified, wisdom that gets cultivated. It's such a joy. So while, you know, and I'm sure other podcasts also might be giving something that might seem unattainable, it's like, hey, just park it out there. Leave it there is like, hey, let's see if my experience is that too, downriver, downriver, yes. but to honor our own path. Yes. So I'm glad you brought it around because we have to honor our own path. And here, yes, where we yes. are, where we are is the only true place and the place we have to be and the place we're all, <laughs> you know, it's, the, it's, it's, exactly. there's a perfection in that, a perfection in that, totally, you know, yes. and to honor that, you know? Yes. Yeah. And so when thoughts come up and we don't spot that they're there until yes. we're deeply in them and we're like, oh my gosh, I have no connection right now to awareness. I'm like so caught up in me, my story. I'm so caught up in it. And this, this is, has to be something that we feel okay about admitting to ourselves. It's like, I'm totally caught in my own story. Yes, honesty is critical. It's critical. Brutal self-honesty is what I call it. You gotta have brutal self-honesty. And so when we're like, yeah, I'm caught in a story and I have no idea where it came from. One, one technique that I'd like to offer is we have a capacity to bring a lens of perception that's outside of the, the movie making mechanism to the movie making mechanism. If we bring presence to the part of us that's diving into another bar of chocolate, the part of us that I want more coffee or I want, I'm going to revisit this conversation with this person for the 10th time today. And I don't know how long <laughs> I've been doing it. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to continue chewing over this because this is what I should have said. And this is what they right, need right, to hear right, from me. Right, and this right, is how right. I want to be seen. And these heated conversations that are destroying our health and they're, they're not doing anything else. They're just, it's the mind running amok. Yes. When we've got these uncomfortable internal mind games going on, bring presence to it. So it's like, I see you. You can be here. You can be here. I see you. You're angry. You need somebody to hear you. You need them to recognize that you're right and they're wrong. And these are the beliefs that you're operating from. Mm -hmm. Let's not judge them. Let them all be here. And within ourselves, we have a capacity to be present to that part of our personality that's all bound up in its own arrogance or self-righteousness or anger or shame or whatever it's running. If we judge it, we're, we're, we're not progressing. We're adding more fuel to the heated fire within ourselves. If we bring presence to it and totally allow it to be here, something happens. What we're doing is that we're engaging another part of our brain that's not running the me, myself, I story. We're actually teaching our brain how to, how to have that story running, the persistent one. And at the same time, it's not the only show in town. Presence can be there watching it. And it's a technique that allows us to observe the parts of ourselves that we normally might be very critical of. And it's only the mind is critical in that way. Whereas the energy of our beingness is loving, is compassionate, and allows whatever part of our personality needs to be yucky and unresolved, allowing it to be there with that presence with that container. It's like our deeper being can be a container for our personality. Mm, that's a good and, way to describe it. 
and 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 that actually changes our brain it changes mm. our brain changes so, our experience too doesn't it and it completely changes our experience it's like oh gosh look it's it's you know it, i'm losing the heat in that argument you know the heat is coming out of it it's changing i can accept things maybe i can forgive myself maybe i can forgive them and we naturally move towards those softer expressions and healing comes so that's one technique that's very potent that is a catch all for many of these patterns that are repetitive and awfully painful to to live through again and again and again you know that's a, a great way to describe it bringing presence to the story yes bringing presence to the story yes yes it's got more heart in it than observe your thoughts you know yes yes and there's more of the felt sense there rather than the mind looking at the mind let's bring our humanness in our compassionate loving beingness let's observe the mind with that energy and it's more potent i found it's more potent for people definitely mm. it definitely is when you when you can be lovingly aware of what yes. is as opposed to uh, that's right. <laughs> Which is that's what we right. usually do. Err. That's right. <laughs> and, and all that's happening then is the mind is judging the mind. Yeah, it's we're, a feedback like, loop. It's a feedback loop. You have it. It's a feedback. Yes, yes. That's wonderful. So um, do you have some, uh, uh, can you take people through that? When you do groups, do you, do you just work one-on-one -on -one or do you, uh, do you sometimes do a process or a meditation or an experiment Mm. something guided mm. uh, yeah. to bring people into that experience or I do I start the sessions with with dropping them in so that there is um, a movement away from the anxiety mm -hmm. that anxious state that we all know mm -hmm. into okay I'm safe here I'm safe here how can I explore and so freedom and creativity gets opened up within us so there's always a leading in at the start then what I do is I, I don't bring people to a chair. I stand at the top and have a roving mic when we're in a scenario of where there's an open, when it's yes. not online. The good old days. The good old days, <laughs> indeed, indeed. And so, and so I ask people, it's the two questions, what's going on for you? Because I want to encourage every spiritual seeker to have autonomy over their own path. The day of one teacher and one guru, these are going, and I'm I'm heralding the dawn of the new, which has a more of um, an autonomous capacity for each student to have their own discernment around. Actually, I can't drop in because of A, B, C, D. I can't access that. Or actually, it's these thoughts that no matter what I do, they will not resolve, soften. And I work with that. People who who actually life I, it doesn't bother me. I, I know it's a movie. I know it's my mind is creating it and I participate in it. And from those, I, with those people, I move them to what is beyond the recognition of your pure nature, of your of true awareness, because they're, they're, it doesn't stop there. Right. However, yes, yeah, it doesn't stop step. there. It's a first step, but it's yes. a necessary step. Oh, it's, it's critical. really, it's critical. And I'd be interested to know, Hale, from, from your work, like what's the duration? Because from my experience, people need to get really used to the recognition of their, their true nature, their divine essence. That needs to be pretty solid for two years. Hmm. After a two year period, something is willing to open again and I, I don't know if you have noticed a period of time. That's a, that's a good question. It, mm. it, I, in, in my experience, it's been different depending on the each body mind mechanism. Some people go from those initial glimpses of, of that which they truly are to abiding more and more of the time mm. relatively quickly. Mm. And other people, it's a process. What, what, what's wonderful to watch is when people do what you're describing, where they're 
however they do it. And now you gave one way, which is through breath, but there are, mm. there are many things actually in Rhonda's many. book and from all the teachers yes. in Rhonda's uh, a book, they give many ways to access yes. that. And, you know, and yes. we uh, as an organization do the same thing. Yes. Uh, and we balance, it's very similar to what you do. We also have uh, some very powerful but simple processes that help people yes. dissolve Yes, the, the, their attachment to the movie. That's right. But I do think it is a process. And if yes. people can be open to the fact that it is a process yes. and they, and they are, are lovingly open to the process as opposed to, I got to do it now. How come mm. I'm not enlightened in this second? Yeah. Or, or, you know, how could I still be having thoughts like this or feelings like this? If I'm, if I'm, really just awareness that doesn't make sense so yes. i must be fooling myself or i must be faking it or i must be yes. not really recognizing the truth of who i am so yes. yeah that all needs to be dealt with and, that's right and released that's right so that's right. so how, how else do you support people in in that through that process that during that two years what do you recommend people do oh yeah everything everything that that um, everything that lies on a deeper level, what's held in the body, what are your nighttime dreams like, what, mm, what still plays as a little bit of multicolor, and even, you know, you have people who are like, who, who, are, who are teaching spiritually, lead, leading spiritual groups, and it's like, it's my kids. It's my kids. Every time, especially moms, you know, that's what will crank up something that's in my cells. Yes. You yes. know? Um, and so we're looking at those other layers. We might find something in a past life. We might some find something in the collective. We might find something in the, in, in, in the realm of um, fear itself, shame itself that sticks to any thought. Like, I'm not afraid of anything, but there's fear eating me up. And so these, these things pop up once we've uh, managed a lot of a, a lot of day-to-day um, -day getting caught in the story. And there's a yes, relative. Yes. And it's important to deal with the deeper stuff. Otherwise, it can. That's right. That's the deeper confuse stuff. Confuse us. Yes. That's right. It's the deeper stuff. And I, and I have those skills. Like when, when I'm looking at somebody, I can see their energy field. I can see their aura. I can see their past life. I can see their destinies. And I can see those capabilities. So I have this palette in front of me with which to, to say, okay, this actually is from three or four generations up your line, you know, and, and it comes, that's where the addiction is originated. So let's do some, some shifting of the karmic line in your family. And lo and behold, all kinds of um, spin-off effect happens that is of benefit to siblings, parents. These kind of things happen, you know, that yes. we, when we go into the more subtle realms of, of what is it that makes us plug in to what our mind says and believe that it's true. And so sometimes rooting up these these habitual thoughts and habitual emotional reactions, we can go to very quirky places, you know, yes, in, in order to heal them. Yes. Yes, yes. And, and that's a wonderful thing because we discover we're multi multi-dimensional beings. We discover that everything is interconnected. Every, we're one unit. There is one unit. And I've got to take care of my part, but there's a knock on effect everywhere. Yes, yes. And so we get to taste that the potency of our own spiritual integrity is operating for the greater good. So we discover that our very, our very own inner personal journey is a gift to all humanity. It is a gift to all humanity. Yes, I love that. That's a you good know? way to express it. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's kind of hard for me to trigger down into, in, into like giving specific tools because the way I work is like, who's in front of me? What's going on for you? What stops you from abiding? And what is it that, that is gnarly? 
in your thinking? What's oh, gnarly? Yeah, no, no. I, yeah. So you yeah. Work, work with people on a one-on-one basis or in small yeah. groups. Yeah. Within yes. the full spectrum of their multidimensionality to see where, where is, where, what is the root cause that is echoing in their phenomenal experience? Yes. Yes. You know? And uh, part of it, you, uh, you were mentioning something about, um, what was the, oh, uh, first off, uh, you, uh, we discussed in advance, maybe giving people a challenge. Oh, yeah. So what would, what would, if someone was going to want to start to apply this? Yeah. In so, their lives, because mm, mm. if we can, again, you know, everyone listening to these podcasts is going to be going towards what they resonate with. And yes. That's right. At the same time, we want want people to benefit every time they listen to them, so that yes. they're uh, just they start transforming just from whatever they've gotten yes. so far. So, That's what right. would be something that you would encourage people to do over any period time period? It doesn't matter. It could yeah. be a few days, a few weeks, a few months, or just yeah. the next ten minutes. To look at our self image. That's a yeah, really good that's, one. That's the one I was, the word yeah. I couldn't, uh, uh, yeah. uh, yes, the word self-image. So let's talk Our self-image. Because our humanness is wired to love and be loved. And our self-image is one way that our cultures have honed in on as a way to commercialize and you do it this way, and this makes you more lovable, and this makes you more acceptable, and this makes you more popular. And you know, there's a there's a fine mess there, really, when we look yes. at. <laughs> yeah, there is. It's like it's wow, a big mess. yes, it's I know. a big mess. <laughs> and each of us is plugged in in some some shape or form to self image. Totally. You know, yes. um, like one thing when I wrote my first book, I don't know, ten years ago or something. Um, I decided I'm never going to look at a review. I'm never going to, because the very first review that somebody sent me was glowing. And he said, I just want to send you a copy of this. I put it on Amazon. And I was like, I can feel myself enjoying this. Yes. That's not okay. Mm -hmm. This is somebody else's opinion of what I've offered. They can love it. They can hate it. And if I'm abiding in pure awareness, then it actually doesn't matter. Yes, yes. It and really that's a, that's doesn't matter. That's an important matter. thing for people to hear. Yeah. The more it really you really doesn't in matter. That. Really doesn't matter. Yes. The humanness might like it or might not like it, but actually I don't read any reviews at all. I stopped. I didn't read any reviews after that. I'm like, huh, I'm actually not going to do it at all. I'm just going to disconnect from it because uh, that's other people's opinions and they're very entitled to them. And actually, it's I'm not going to make it and something that I put into my head at all, good or bad. So, so that's one thing that I did. So, and, and I suppose it was part of my mechanism to unplug from what people think of me. Mm -hmm. And one challenge that might be a bit, a bit of fun is for everybody to wear clothes that they feel they would, they should be paid to wear. <laughs> okay, explain. <laughs> and go to their familiar coffee shop, grocery store, visit family, like to go someplace where people know them. So wear something that you think is hideous, that completely goes against your style. That, and you can do that, that, that on Zoom too. <laughs> you could do it on Zoom. You could. But the thing is, I remember saying this to somebody and he said, well, I could do that as a party and tell everybody to do it. And I'm like, that's, that's not the, the point that yes, defeats yes. that's it it <laughs> defeats the purpose but the yes. fear was so bad it's like whoa me change my entire image because the exercise is okay you wear whatever it is um something something that really you 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 don't want to be seen dead in mm -hmm. and you go out absolutely cool and natural as if well what's wrong and let people judge you and don't soak it up don't tell them you're doing an exercise. Just watch to see what does your mind do because you're setting up a scenario of where people are invited to judge you. Yes, Because yes. you might have a, a, a piece of underwear on your head, <laughs> right? That kind <laughs> yes. of thing. Yeah, like, no, I'll put it. a piece of underwear on your head and go with a pair of panties or an underpants and go do your grocery shopping. 
and then watch and be completely your normal self and say their opinion of me is none of my concern their opinion right. of me and watch what happens inside how we want yes. to protect ourselves how we don't want to be laughed at we don't want to be judged look at all the hijinks we do to avoid to avoid allowing people to think what they like mm -hmm. because we want to protect our self image because we want to be seen in a certain way so that we can be safe and loved and all of this mechanism of self image has to break down has to break yes. down yes yes it has to be seen to be, I, I'm investing in, in who my mind thinks is acceptable, who my mind thinks is lovable, really? And we can drop the whole thing. But a great way to drop it is, well, what do I have to drop actually? How deep is this investment in my image? And doing that exercise, so everybody who's listening, do this once in the next five days. Put a piece of clean underwear on your head and go grocery shopping. And don't giggle with people. Don't give them permission to, to you know, to no, join like with you normal. in the joke. You have to act like it's normal and watch yes. what is my mind doing? What yes. is my mind doing? How invested am I? Or am I, am I actually, you know, everybody is free to think exactly what they want of me. It's really none of my business. What I'm doing is buying my groceries right now. And can we be still and in the present moment and not... When we provoke self-image uh, judgment, can we ignore it and still remain present? That's my challenge. That's a big challenge for most people, especially yeah. right now, because uh, you know, a lot of people aren't going out grocery shopping. They're having their groceries delivered. <laughs> yes. But uh, so what's, I, I love that. Um, what's a, an ongoing practice to address that? That's a, that's a, a challenge if you really want to yeah that's a challenge to see one pocket yes you yes. know to see a pocket of self-image and see how we plug into that and then of course that leads to well actually i'm not my body at all you know i'm not my body but there must be love for this body and respect for this body um what could be an ongoing thing Running a sentence is very useful, you know, and traditionally it would be running mantra, mm -hmm. where a sacred phrase would be repeated. And there's energy in those sacred phrases. Yes, there is. There is energy in them. So if somebody is drawn to a sacred phrase, then Om Namah Shivaya is a beautiful one. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants a sentence in English, in their own language, to recondition the mind, there's potency in that too. And sometimes we have to condition the mind with a little bit of truth, you know? Yes, definitely. And a sentence might be, I'm not who I think I am. I'm not who I think I am. A sentence might be, this is not real. This is not real. I'm going to keep saying that until I see this is not real. Lo and behold, if you keep running a sentence, the back of your mind, this is not real. This is not real. This is, I'm watching the news and this is not real. This me is not real. And so that is not real. What we're looking for is a eureka moment of like, oh gosh, actually it's not. My mind is creating all of this and it has a believability about it, but my mind is creating it all. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for avoidance. Oh, this is not real. Therefore, no, 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 no. I'm out of the game. It's right, right. not that. There is not, no it's I. It's not a spiritual bypass. Is not I'm a suggesting. bypass. Yes. That's right. Not a bypass. To recondition our brain is a really good thing. Because there, were, there certainly were parts of my own journey where I had to tell my mind, you can't go here. Because your mind will try to help you. And it's a great <laughs> tool until it's in the way. Yeah, well, until it thinks it's in charge. <laughs> it thinks it's in charge and it yeah. wants to go with you. It wants to create that inner awareness, you know, and like when we drop into that beingness, what's a really good thing to check out is, is my mind creating this? This felt inner sense. Is my mind creating it? Is it a state of mind or is it deeper? That's a great pointer. Is this deeper than a state of mind? Mm -hmm. And so anytime we can recognize during the day, I feel such and such. It's like, okay, is that a state of mind? And your mind is co-opting your body. So now you have your mind and your emotions running the same story. 
what is not a state of mind? Where in me is not created by my mind? Mm, that's a great question. Where in me? And there's no real answer. Oh, it's there. You, you know, we can't yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, we can't answer, find that's it. That's mind. It's just that's more mind. That's right. It's more yeah. mind. You'll only yeah. land on a state of mind. But the openness of that question, where is not a state of mind within? Yes, yes. You know, so these are some tools that are useful. Yes, those are great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And earlier on, you mentioned that awareness, recognizing that awareness, you, you, that the, the awareness that you are is actually just the first step. Yes. So can you talk a little bit what's beyond that? Yes. Oof. I, I usually don't talk about this until, um, until people have a two year period of being very familiar with awareness. Okay. But you just give, so, uh, so say as yeah. much as you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, because people uh, go, oh, that's gobbledygook, and their mind comes in because their mind tries to understand it. So, so, so this part is not for the mind, but something deeper knows. All right, everybody, put your, park your minds. Yes. Just for now, you can bring, yes. you can pick them up again later. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and it, it'll be there. Oh, it'll open, be there waiting for you. <laughs> oh, open to what Jack's about to say. Yeah. With your heart as best you can. Yeah be empty to see what happens yes yes being aware that we exist being aware of awareness being aware that we are that awareness then we drop a little bit deeper and it's almost like let trap doors open now let a trap door open of where being aware of awareness, let a trap door open, fall deeper to where there is awareness, where it does not have the capacity to be aware of itself. Mm. It's awareness that isn't doing anything, doesn't see anything, doesn't know anything. It's not, it doesn't engage in turning around and looking at and being aware of itself. Pure awareness that doesn't know that it is. Mm -hmm. Let another trapdoor beneath that open. The trapdoor is dropping the idea that your true identity is awareness. There is no need to be anything. It's a great stepping stone to, to swapping I am my body, my mind, my thoughts, I am Jack O'Keefe, to I am awareness, I am pure being, I am an expression of the divine through right through to actually there is no identity at all what was it that was ever looking for the solid ground of any identity drop any identity at all deeper than identity the idea of existence shows up to be a myth mm -hmm. so we're going kind of Prior to existence is the only word I have, but prior isn't accurate because it suggests yeah, time. That's right. But we're using language, so we do We're using we language. Yes. So where the idea of existence has not yet, ca cannot formulate, mm -hmm. hasn't arisen. So before existence. Now it gets pretty empty. Yes. blank nothing and the concept of nothing isn't there right then then words words are obsolete <laughs> yes <laughs> sometimes when i do retreats there's just nothing to say and you, you just so well for that. Yes. 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 That's beautiful. And that's actually, so whether you understood that just now or not, it's not important. Your mm. heart felt that. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and so that's actually a great place for us to leave people. Uh, because you've gone through the whole journey with us, which has been lovely, really lovely. I've really appreciated you sharing 
as much as you have. And since we've dropped more of even just the awareness of awareness, mm -hmm. uh, that's a good place, even if it's just aspirationally for us to, to, mm. to move forward. Mm. Uh, and it, it's a great completion place. So yes. let me just say a couple of other things before we complete. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to there. So Jack's two books are how to be a spiritual rebel and born to be free. And she does weekly open truth serum cafe meetings on Sundays. Now, how does, mm -hmm. how to, uh, you gave us a link for people to find that. Yeah. Or on my website, which is Jack hyphen O'Keefe.com. Yes. You'll see, you'll see it under events, truth serum cafe. We meet for 90 minutes. Um, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful Sangha. It's people just, they come one gig at a time and people usually come back and there's a sense of community and it can, it goes from how we show up in the world to very, very deep material that doesn't have words. Right. Um, it's a lovely ongoing thing on some Yeah, ways. you cover it all, which is wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, I'll cover it all, yeah. Uh, and so there are two books Jack's books that we'd uh -huh. li she'd like to recommend and I'd like to recommend because if you want to find more about mm. Jack, read one mm. of her books. Um, also, if you haven't yeah. yet read the, Sec the Greatest Secret, please do. You yes. meet many wonderful teachers like Jack. Yes. Uh, and Jack, you also have another book you wanted to recommend. Can, uh, it's <laughs> Embodied Enlightenment by uh, uh, Amoda Ma. Yes, indeed. Um, it's just a book that somebody sent me recently, and it's a very grounded how to show up in the world with contemporary lives and this inner knowing of your beingness and how does that show up in the world. Wonderful. It's very practical. I really like it. I have I've never met a Moda Ma, but but I can stand over this book called Embodied Enlightenment. Okay. It's lovely. Very good. Yeah. So jack-okeefe.com, uh, and you mm -hmm. also have uh, a Facebook uh, group, Prior, yeah. Prior Beyond. And again, uh, everyone, these, these uh, links will be in the notes. Yeah. So you'll be able to just click on the links and follow these. Yeah. Uh, and your YouTube is Jack O'Keefe. Yeah, there's a lot of Without YouTube stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, 150 or 160 or something YouTube um, videos. Um, and I released a, a meditation CD, which I think is now on YouTube too, actually. Um, uh, and there's audio books of both of the books on my site. And I did a chanting CD, actually, of original music because I had a degree in music way back. Nice. <laughs> so, nice. so, yeah, so I chant a bit too for fun. Well, yeah. anyway, this has been yeah. wonderful. I really enjoyed uh, sharing this time with you. I think you you gave something of real value to I hope everyone so, yeah. listening to this. And thank you for the opportunity to uh, to chat about it and put some meat on 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 our quotes. You know, yes, in, yes, in yes. Rhonda's book, just yes, to give some nice. more context. Yes, it's yeah. been wonderful to do that, and yeah. and it's wonderful. Every one of these conversations has been totally different. Oh, that's beautiful. And so as people watch these or listen to these, they'll be able to get more and more sense of what Rhonda was pointing at yeah. from all the unique perspectives that each teacher go. brings to the yes. book. So, yes, every path is different. And I think that's why it's so important for everybody who's listening to honor their own path. What's real yes. for you right now? That's totally. where the rubber hits the road. That's where that's you m making your path, walking your path and honor that. Honor that. I hope you enjoyed our time with Jack O'Keefe. You can learn more about her in the podcast notes for this episode, including her books, her Truth Serum Cafe, her retreats, and links to her Facebook and YouTube pages. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please give us a five-star rating. Subscribe to the podcast and share it with the people you care about. If you'd like to learn more about Lester Levinson's and my work, including the Sedona Method, please visit Sedona.com. As you explore our site, you'll learn how to recognize and live the peace, love, joy, and beauty that are your basic nature. 
while learning how to also see through your thoughts and feelings. Be free from the noise of the mind. Let go of all your inner obstacles and unhook from your limiting stories and beliefs. We have books, courses, events, and plenty of free material to explore. Again, please go to Sedona.com. Thank you for being here, and I look forward to sharing the next episode of Letting Go and the Greatest Secret.